Centre for Arguing Technology at the University of Dundee. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about, I've slightly changed my title to uh, Ethos Mining and Political Debate, and that's supervised by Kat Simka. So, just to give a brief outline of the presentation, um, I'm going to go over some of the motivation background, um, what we've done or what I've done for Ethos Mining. Um, what we can then do once you've extracted some of the data, and then a final step where we're looking at ethos types. So, as Martin actually mentioned earlier in his introductory session, um, Aristotle defines the three modes of persuasion. So, logos looking at reasoning, um, pathos looking at emotions, and ethos looking at the character and credibility of the speaker. Um, so, most of the work in argumentation has focused upon um, logos, so that's if you look at argumentation schemes, and as Martin mentioned earlier as well, um, they tend to, they try to capture ethos um, in a certain way, but um, they don't do it very effectively. So the idea behind this work then is to look at um, ethos solely, and to try and annotate it by itself and automatically extract it um, independently from Logos and Pathos. So as I was saying, what we want to do is uh, find the topic uh, support and attack relations between entities, so between people or um, groups of people, and then try and use the understanding that we gain from this to try and visualize some of the next dynamics um, from this data. So for the purposes of this work, um, I've modified the definition of ethos just slightly to say that it's the character of a person who is a participant of a conversation. And what we want to do is when we look at ethos, we want to say that it's um, applies to anything that's on the linguistic surface. We're not trying to look for implicit information. So to do this, um, we are at first started looking at an answer to the parliamentary debate record, um, because it has some nice structured data, um, and we have the relationships between different entities. So within that, we then want to look at the positive and negative and the positive statements, or positive and negative reasons. So an example of a positive easy or a positive topic statement would be the honourable member for looking south to make a kind of speech. So this is um, Mr. Ashley in this case supporting um, Mr. Bright. And then in the negative case, we then have um, I've never heard such a bad speech from honourable member. Um, so this is Mr. Um, Ashley then attacking um, Mr. Potty's uh, character. So the first step for this then was um, we submitted a paper uh, to Common in 2016, and that was looking at trying to uh, manually annotate ethos in the political debate, and then automatically extract it using some manual dimensions of the rules. So um, we extracted uh, 60 transcripts overall, um, and manually annotated them for, for ethos. Um, we did that using Google Plus, um, made in the Centre for Argument Technology, and stored them in AISDB and then split the data into a training and test set so that we can try and do some um, automatic extraction. We also um, annotate, or had a second annotator um, annotate the 10% subset of the data to validate it. Um, so from this you can see a uh, score of 0.67 which refers to if the sentence um, contains ethos or not. And then we can see that for attack and support uh, we had a half of one basically because it's quite easy determine. Um, for speakers it was always going to be one because they're always they're given in the text. And then we had 0 0.9 for determining who the target of each sentence was. So there are a number of issues with the language, um, especially in answer. That is that people aren't referred to by their names, instead they're referred to as honorable members, honorable gentlemen, honorable ladies. We also have problems with constituency names and they're very similar um, to some people's names um, and they're very similar to um, I mean, they're, they're very unusual, um, especially for uh, places in the north of Scotland. Um, we also have problems with pronouns, where people are referred to as he and she, instead of their prior names. There's problems with parliamentary language, that's some of the time that you have sort of a legal language, um, and some things have a banned set of words, so you can't call each other an idiot, and things like that. Um, there's also a wide range of topics, so you can have one transcript talking about uh, milk production in the UK and the next uh, transcript talking about nuclear weapons. So there's just a broad range of topics. So to automatically extract ethos, we have to build um, an ethos mining pipeline. So I'll just give a quick overview of this. The idea is that we um, can apply some natural language processing techniques, so um, carbon speech tagging, 
and then use some domain specific rules to try and extract um, some of the people from each of these entities. So things like honorable member and honorable gentleman. We then want to try and remove some of the reportable speech um, within the text, so just referring to something that someone else has said. And then, as a, as a step from this, you then get a list of sentences that are either adopted or not. After this point, then, you want to classify them as positive or negative. So to do that, um, we actually use uh, Bing Lu's sentiment analysis uh, lexicon, and then created our own adopted word lexicon um, for the sentiment classification. And then the last step, then, is that we can visualize some of these um, ideas. So for the first step in determining um, if a sentence contains ethos or not, we ended up with an F score of 0.7. Um, you can see that we've removed named entity recognition from this, and that's because it actually gave it a lot of false positives. Um, and then the second step for determining uh, sentiment classification, when we use a support vector machine, and then both the top support lexicon and the sentiment uh, lexicon from Bengali, we achieved a map of the score of 0.78. So that was the first step. The second step was then that um, we wanted, or I wanted to try and generalize some of these ideas. Um, so we submitted the paper to Ishtag, which was presented um, in July. And the idea was to try and use some new classification methods, like deep learning, um, and try and generalize um, some of the ideas we had. So as I was saying, we wanted to do this to improve the ethos mining methods to see if we can get um, higher accuracy. Um, we wanted to make use of the new classification methods. And then also, by doing this, we could maybe look to see if there's any other insights into the data we can, can determine. So we actually um, increased the size of the corpus again. So we increased it by 30 transcripts and reannotated all of the data. The idea being that in the first set of annotations, it relied upon a lot of implicit knowledge or common knowledge, which can um, really show what's happening on the linguistic surface. So we reannotated the new set of guidelines, which are available along there. And again, we performed um, or had a second annotator do a 10% subset of the data. Um, the overall CAFTA score for determining if a sentence is adopted or not stayed the same, but we actually improved um, trying to determine who the target of each sentence was. So for this work, we then re or I really developed the pipeline, um, again using some of the same techniques. Um, so in the first step, we have uh, raw text being passed as part of the speech tavern. Um, and then in the second step, we have raw text being passed to universal dependency tagger. So the idea is that we want to look to see the relations between um, each of the words, if they're subject and object, and have a look. We also need to resolve who the target um, and the source of each sentence is. Um, and obviously, because of the language, this is quite difficult. So we can use some of the main specific rules um, by looking at if we so at some point, uh, a person has been mentioned by their constituency. So we can look back in the text and pull that mentions and find it from that. And then we can use external data from Wikipedia to match up the constituency names with the people. After this step, then we pass the universal dependencies to an entity extraction module. The idea is that you um, use domain specific rules to pinpoint um, where someone is mentioned and then use the um, subject or object from all these related words to just extract the entities and the words related to them. Again, we, we pass um, the raw text into a sentiment classifier. Um, so the idea is that we can just uh, determine the polarity tags. And to do this, um, we improve the methods that we already have. So we, again, we use the corpus, uh, the the lexicon. We use the adopted word lexicon. And then we actually added a negative word lexicon that was specific to Hansa to try and boost the results up. So instead of 0 0.78, now we have um, a macro architecture for 0 0.84. So the final step then is to use um, all of these separate features and pass them into a deep modular recurrent neural network. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details of the neural network, but the, idea, the main idea is that because our data set is quite small, we want to make use of as much of the data as we can. So by passing in each of these features as separately into the neural network, do a classification and then it can be merged up within the neural network and then we get um, easy or sentences either containing ethos or not. The final step then, oh, and when we did this, um, we ended up with results of uh, 0.74 and determining um, a 
So then just to conclude, um, within this research, I've conducted uh, or created the first corpus um, of ethos, um, annotated solely, um, away from logos. I've uh, created the first pipe one for ethos mining and put the work back in comma. Um, as far as we're aware, we've created the first uh, deep modular frontier network for test classification. Um, we've also, in comma this year, um, did the first um, ethos type classification. And then as a final step, we also have the first set of preliminary ethos analytics. 
So some of the ideas for future work would then be um, we can try and link um, corpora from, say, news articles to um, political debates and get a prior sense of ethos for each of the politicians. Or we can maybe try and apply some trust networks, which they'd rather be initially had, to determine some credibility weights for politicians. And then the idea would be we can further, um, or we can create some further analytics um, for ethos based upon the ethos type classification. So, thank you for listening.